All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, a little bit of a late night Monday market report for Sunday, uh, but at least we're getting it out. And um, this is a pretty nice one today. Um, finally, uh, after I'd say a little bit of a hiatus, we had the Long Beach show happening. So some of the uh, the auction houses, of course, Heritage Auctions had theirs last week, but Great Collections kind of dialed it down because of the Long Beach sale. So now they've uh, they've thrown some bangers back up onto the uh, the platform, and uh, we're going to talk about some pretty nice coins. We have really nice tight pieces. We have registry set coins. We just have a full battery of just amazing coins to talk about today. Uh, to kind of get your, uh, I don't know, your collective numismatic juices flowing, so to speak. Um, in case this is your first time here, first of all, welcome. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. We're going to talk about the uh, post-1900 era, so the modern age, of uh, coins. These are all graded either by PCGS, NGC. Uh, sometimes we'll have the occasional annex graded coin on the list. Uh, today... We're going to look at the realized sales from greatcollections.com, one of my favorite um, e-commerce platforms for coins and currency. Uh, they have been uh, building up just a solid reputation. They've um, hosted some pretty amazing collections here just in the last year, uh, and uh, they have certainly been on the forefront of uh, what is... One of the most reliable auction houses that you could uh, uh, ever, ever be a part of. And uh, first, you know, and then second of all, I just love buying from them. Uh, you know, it couldn't be an easier way to uh, to add something uh, quite nice to uh, your collection. So if you're looking for a high-end piece or just any piece at all, you know, they also have some of the lower dollar stuff. Great Collections has been one of the best out there in the market today. Um, so yeah, I, everything looks good, uh, from what I've seen, uh, we have 18 beautiful coins to talk about. So let's go ahead and get started right now with this gem right here that obviously has, has nothing else going for it other than the fact that it is one grade point away from being perfect. This gem right here is a PCGS Mid-State 69 Red 1998 Lincoln Memorial Cent. Uh, no variety, nothing like that. This is just going to be a strictly a registry set coin. And in case you guys don't know what a registry set is, there are people, there are folks that collect at the highest possible grade point value uh, coins in their respective um, series. So PCGS, NGC, these are grading companies that host registries. And uh, folks can assemble the finest graded coins, it's a point-based system, it's a lot of bragging rights, and uh, oftentimes these folks that collect into these are often deep-pocketed. Um, so that's why we see a lot of big premier prices. This one right here ended up selling for $1,694.25. Again, if you think you have something like this and you're going to go out and grade it, keep in mind that the at the top, it gets really, really discerning. Uh, between you and the graders, they're like two different opinions. So, um, not for the faint at heart. And uh, me personally, I wouldn't recommend it. Just enjoy it for what it is. Um, you know, when one comes out in the marketplace and it solves for a lot of money, you know, it's always good to revel, like, you know, in something like that. Sure. I mean, you could give it a try and maybe have some sort of success, but you might have better odds playing the lottery. I don't know. Um, so, there you go. That's how we're going to kick off the MMR for the week. Uh, we also have a very, very stunning 1995 doubled die obverse Lincoln Memorial set. Um, this one, of course, is pretty well known. Uh, it was even made news outlets back upon its release. Uh, it used to be the big chase piece uh, during its day. I remember like it was yesterday, these things were selling at coin shops for two to three hundred bucks. Um, and now the individual coins have come down, but graded specimens... Um, uh, can get pretty crazy. Like this one here is an NGC Mint State 69 Red, which again, like the 98 we saw previous, is one point away from perfection. This one right here sold for $1,688.62. Now the next one that we have here, uh, pretty crazy how 10 years can all of a sudden make a huge difference. 
uh, on some of the earlier registry set level pieces. Uh, like back in the day, 10 years ago, there was no such thing as a 67 plus in a 1961 Denver Lincoln Memorial. Uh, 67 was the top grade during its day and those things sold for thousands of dollars. So now we have this one here, which is a Mid-State 67 plus. We have actually a plus designation coin on uh, on a, quite a uh, quite a rarity. Uh, I mean, these things weren't the best of shape when you're finding them um, back in the 60s. And, uh, you know, high premium examples carry such such a huge, huge weight. Uh, for a lot of these registry set participants. This one right here ended up selling for $4,674.38 10 years ago. A Mid-State 67 without the plus used to sell for that same amount of money. So yeah, times have changed um, as more people are still grading these today. Um, that's going to dilute the population numbers at the top. So keep that in mind. Uh, and here's, what, of course, one of the more difficult uh, P-minted coins of the 50s to find in top grade. Anything 67 is uh, often a huge hit. And uh, here we go. Here's another one. PC just uh, gave a 67 red to this one. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a necessity in most Lincoln Cent registries. This one sold for $2,180.25. And... And uh, we do have a Steely to update for you guys. Uh, this time an NGC graded Mint State 68. Um, you know, this coin right here could probably be a PC, could be a PCGS uh, 67 or 67 plus. There's always kind of like a half a grade point difference uh, between both companies. And, uh, you know, if someone's looking for a high end kind of quote unquote bargain level 43, uh, this is probably the one here for you. Um, coin exhibits really nice surfaces. It's a very clean coin. There's a few little minor ticks in the fields behind uh, Lincoln's head. And um, yeah, overall, just a very well struck example, which most of them were at that time. This one ended up selling for $1,355.62. A uh, similarly graded uh, PCGS coin would fetch over double what this one ended up as. So again, it's more of the bargain level uh, piece uh, for a registry set, probably more of a place marker um, before, you know, the next big one comes along, uh, maybe a 68 CAC um, that's graded in PCGS plastic. Those will hit, you know, that four to $5,000 level. And those are the ones that most discerning registry set Lincoln collectors want. Uh, and we also had a pair of just stunning early 40s Lincoln's, how about this 1941D that ended up graded as a Mint State 68 Red by PCGS. This thing is beautiful. Um, yeah, top grade, top pop right here. Uh, it's the finest known. And, uh, you know, if, if you're looking for it, yeah, they get pretty pricey. Um, anything, um, you know, the cutoff normally, uh, you know, is anything prior uh, to 1950. Uh, they get pretty crazy at the highest level. So this one right here, um, uh, very worthy on the list at $19,687.50 was the final hammer price by the time all was set and done. Um, beautiful coin, uh, but also joining up with this one, we also have this 1940S that shows just a slight little bit of toning on there on the obverse. You can see kind of like light hints of pastel rose red in there kind of like that pinkish color um definitely an eye appealing example uh, again we have another um you know just amazing blitz of a grade mid-state 68 red is a true bomb uh for the lincoln Sun registry um this one another big sale seventeen thousand four hundred thirty seven dollars and fifty cents was the final sale price on this one all right, now we're on to nickels, and believe it or not, there were a few nickels to talk about, uh, whereas the last few weeks, nickels have been virtually non-existent. So I'm glad to see uh, to see some more come out here, um, you know, 
past the Long Beach sale. Uh, I, I think uh, Great Collections kind of held back on a few of these pieces and waited until that event closed out. But here's a great one here. NGC got this 1993D as a Mint State 68, and it did earn a really stealthy six full steps. I mean, if you looked at the reverse, this thing is absolutely hammered. The strike is second to none on this one. And um, yeah, it is going to be a necessity in a Jefferson Nickel registry. This one ended up selling for $1,856.25. And uh, this is a 1965. Now keep in mind, this is not a special mint set coin. The actual business strike types of this date, along with 66 and 67, are really tough to find in full steps. However, we have this piece right here, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It says nothing about full steps on the slab label. Uh, it's just simply a mid-state 67. Um, so, yeah, this will work in a registry set. Uh, and there are registry sets that collect and show some of these nickels without full steps at all. You know, there is a completely different kind of niche in, in terms of strike designation. Um, so, yeah, finding a full steps one of this, this date is next to impossible. Um, there's maybe a couple of them out there in existence, and uh, those coins are white whales to be sure. This one ended up selling for uh, $2,041.88, and that's pretty, uh, pretty remarkable considering no full steps on this one. Uh, and the same goes here for this too. Another difficult date of coin. Just overall a really clean example. 1960D is the date on this one. Uh, PCGS again, like the previous coin, gave this one to Mint State 67. No full steps. And it certainly doesn't look like that. that the steps there are very, very flat. Um, this one ended up selling for $1,013.62, proving yet again that you don't need the full steps. You just need the numerical grade to make these a very expensive coin. Uh, the last couple nickels that we're going to talk about are some of the most amazing I've seen in a while. How about this 1948 right here with uh, just truly uh, amazing toning that looks like it came from an older kind of Dansko or Library of Coins album. Um, the, the toning is very unmistakable in that way. And uh, this is a beauty. Uh, this one is a PCGS Mint State 67 with full steps. Uh, good looking coin. Um, the toning certainly uh, gives this one tons more of brownie points. And uh, this one sold for $2,617.88. And the final nickel of the group is going to be a wartime love right here. 1945D is the date. And uh, you could see the large mint mark on the reverse, uh, thereby highlighting this as a wartime silver composition, uh, which also includes a little manganese in there for extra flavor. Uh, this one right here, a stunner. PCGS actually awarded this one to Mint State 68 with full steps, um, along with the just overall eye appeal of that tone toning. And you also have little magentas and purples right in the middle of the coin. Uh, and it's also QA certified, which is uh, similar to what CAC is, uh, but mostly for uh, more modern type of coins. Uh, so this one, just an absolute beast, ended up selling for $4,950. Um, we don't see coins come across the auction block like this too often. And we do have a few dimes. How about 1960? Uh, just kind of like a random date, you know? Uh, of a coin that most of us have probably found ourselves. But will it actually grade out this high with full split bands is the question. Uh, we've seen coins like this uh, in BU rolls. We've seen them at coin shops. You know, they'll sell these um, uh, like early 60s, late 50s Roosevelt dimes for melt. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't feel bad picking a lot of these up if they look like this. So this is a PCGS Mint State 67 Plus with full split bands. It does have a nice full torch on the reverse. This one sold for $1,182.07. And we do also do have a couple of uh, some of the more stunning Mercury Dimes I've seen in a while. Uh, 30AD is a date that we don't see come up too often. But when one does and it's as 
nicely graded as this one, it certainly warrants a, a, an extra look. Uh, I mean, you know, who could argue with a Mint State 68 full bands? The coin looks like it was struck and minted yesterday, uh, which says a lot. The, the state of preservation on some of these coins that are like hitting 80 90 years old is just mind bottling to me uh so seeing this one is uh certainly a blessing in disguise this one ended up selling for two thousand seven hundred twenty six dollars and 25 cents and if you think that 38 was pretty neat how about one of the big top key dates at a really phenomenal grade 1921 philadelphia mercury dime is uh is a must-have for any high-end Mercury Dime collector. Not necessarily registry sets, but I know of typeset collectors that would go out of their way to own one of these and have it as being their uh, kind of like front-runner coin for the Mercury Dime slot. So this one, Mid-State 65 with full bands, looks every bit the part, CAC certified. This is an ultimate dream coin for a lot of Mercury Dime fanboys out there. Uh, this one ended up as a eleven thousand one hundred twenty four dollar sale. Um, that is not a typo. That is kind of like the going rate for these mid level mid state Mercury's that bear a nineteen twenty one or a twenty one Denver uh, date on there. So let you guys know. Yeah, these are pure royalty. Uh, and we're going to end it off on a few quarters. Now this one took me by absolute freaking surprise. Yeah, a 2019 West Point. You guys remember these? They only made 2 million of them for each design, uh, and they were all the rage a few years ago. Would you believe this thing's four years old today? Uh, I can't. I, I really can't. Uh, I mean, it seemed like just yesterday I was talking about how much of a, um, a chase these were, and now here we are four years later talking about, okay, so which which is going to be the first one to pop over $10,000? Uh, and there have been a few, but let's go ahead and add another one to the list. We have a San Antonio Missions, um, which isn't necessarily one of the rarest um, uh, designs, I guess, or not so much rarest, but more um, coveted. Um, you know, that that's reserved for a few of the other designs, like the American Memorial Park is a hot one right now. Um, so this one right here, uh, check out the grade. It needs no explaining whatsoever. A 69? Are you kidding me? Um, which, you know, there's probably only maybe one or two or three in that grade level. And they're all just tightly held onto by collection, collection, collections of this caliber. Um, yeah, this one, this one's on a list and it deserves it. Uh, so this is a coin that ended up selling for 10000 six hundred sixty eight dollars and thirty eight cents i'm telling you guys we're gonna look back 10 years from now look back at these things they're like wow did that really sell for 10 grand because now they're worth twenty thirty thousand dollars and the u.s mint hadn't put out another circulation rarity much like this one here so wow uh i guess get them while they're hot because they're just gonna get hotter as time goes on but yeah cool to see a example of any one of these that eclipse uh the ten thousand dollar mark uh and the last couple coins again much like the uh 65 nickel that we looked at earlier in this video the 67 washington quarter is uh, scarce in a way that well there were no mint sets so the only way you could find these is either if you're lucky a bu roll good luck with that uh, or just really searching through an old collection or an album that maybe had a mid-state kind, kind, you know, kind of grade coin like this one. Uh, because outside of that, a lot of these were generally well circulated and nobody cared for them. You know, uh, once 90% uh, had left the building, yeah, people really turned their back and shunned away the copper nickel clad generation of Washington Quarters up through 1970 you know and then things just kind of normalized from there but ngc gave this one to mid state 68 beautiful very lustrous coin uh has some pl surfaces on there as well this one sold for 1896 dollars and 75 cents and then finally to round out the monday market report for the week how about a uh, quite colorful very crusty 1948 denver 
Washington Quarter. Now, the date on its own, not a rarity. You know, if you needed a mid state example of this date, you could probably pick one up for around 25, 30 bucks. Uh, but how about this one that is tailored for just a really weird rainbow level registry set? But PCGS gave mid state 68 grade to this one. Um, man, I'm willing to bet they were they used their X ray vision to get under all the layers of color here just to make sure that this one deserved that 68. Uh, top tier, top flight coin, and uh, I'm happy to report that this one ended it ended up selling for $14,062.50. So for some of you that maybe have a coin that is quite colorful and very toned that came from or was passed down to you from uh, you know uh, grandparents or parents or something like that, you might want to consider grading them. I know people are kind of like, you know, they're a little indifferent on coins like this. Uh, I've even had a number of people say, well, I'd rather just dip them, uh, you know, and take a coin that's worth 14K and turn into one that's worth $14. It's completely up to you. But I'm just saying, if you don't need it, sell it, buy whatever the heck you want, and then just, you know, live a very good life after that. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this one. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. If you guys are going to check this out on the Late Late Show, um, you know, on Sunday night, then uh, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, for those of you that are going to check this out on President's Day, hell, how appropriate. Uh, I wish you guys a great week. Have a wonderful week. And hopefully uh, some of you had the day off tomorrow on a Monday. Uh, but that's it. Uh, that, that's a really awesome report. And I'm glad to bring this here to you. So you guys keep on collecting. Enjoy the hobby. And I will see you next time on the next coin video. So long.